Good morning, everyone. Today is January fourteenth, Saturday morning.、Um, I ran,、uh, randomly looked up this problem because、uh, this is the problem for、uh, Leap Code has a daily problem challenge. So this is today's problem. Ten、um, Leap Code problem one thousand sixty one. This is today's problem challenge.、Uh, you see, all the other problems are sorted in. The ascending order, except this one, because this is the daily problem. Leetcode has a monthly challenge. You have like until seven hours. I think it's UTC time, not Pacific time. Day fourteen. I just finished this problem <laughs> for the first month of this year. This is the first problem that I、uh, finished for the Leetcode daily problem challenge.、Um, I think this is a very good refresher, and we can introduce a template. For solving problems like this, let's take a look at the problem first.、Uh, lexicographically smallest equivalent string.、Um, it's not a new problem. It's a pretty old problem.、Um, you know, right now we have like more than two thousand problems. This one is only one、uh, thousand.、Uh, its number is one thousand sixty-one. So let's take a look. You're given two strings of the same length S1 and S2 and a string base string. We say S1 i and S2 i are equivalent characters. By nothing else, they, as long as they are in the same position in the two different strings, they are equivalent characters. So this is this problem's definition. Okay, not by any other definition. For example, if S1 is A B C, S2 is C D E, then we have A is equivalent to C because they are in the same position in two different strings. Same as B and D, B and D, and C and E, because they are in the same positions in the two different strings. And then equivalent characters follow the usual rules of any equivalence relation. Reflexivity: A is equivalent to A itself. Symmetry: If A is equivalent to B, then B is equivalent to A. Easy to understand. The third one is important: is transitivity. If a equals to b and b equals to b, b is equivalent to c. That means c is equivalent to a. Is transitive. Okay. So, for example, given the equivalence information from S1 equals a b c, S2 equals c d e, a c d and a a b are equivalent strings of base string e e d. Okay. So we're introducing a third parameter in the API that is base string. So. This is the string that we would like to come up with the lexicographically smallest string with. Okay, written. So the problem is asking us to return the lexicographically smallest string of the base string by using the re, by using the equivalency information from S1 and S2. So it might be a difficult.、Uh, it might be a bit difficult to understand why、uh, we reached this conclusion.、Uh, we reached. A A B is the lexicographically smallest. Let's take a look at one example. It will help us understand. Suppose S one is Parker, S two is Morris. Base string is this. Let's forget about base string for a moment. Let's just figure out the equivalency relationship between S one and S two first. Based on the equivalency information, what we have is M and P, M, P and M. They are in the same positions, so they are equivalent. A And O, they are equivalent. R, okay, R and R, the third, the third position, R and R, okay, they are equivalent to itself, right? And then K and R, so R and K, they are equivalent. So we have R and K, they are equivalent. So moving on, we have E and I. So E and I, these two are equivalent, and then we have the last one is S and R. So R occurs again, but we have encountered R here. So we put S into the same batch, the same hash set or tree set or whatever. It's a, a union. All of these three characters they are equivalent because of transitivity, right? It transits. It's transitive. Okay, so. Based on the first example, we can tell we basically need to、um, find the lexicographically smallest character in the same batch because in one batch, every single character they are equivalent. 
So then we find the smallest, the lexicographic the smallest character in this batch. That is basically a representative. So we'll use that one to represent the whole batch. Then we form a string that is lexicographically smallest based on the base string. So then we go through this base string, which is parser. So P lexicographically smallest is M. So we replace it by M. A is still A. It's A is lexicographic smallest uh, character in the alphabet. And then R, R smallest, smallest is this batch. Okay, so this one is already sorted lex lexicographically. So it's K. K is the representative. So we replace R with K, right? So, and then we encounter S. S is also in this batch. So its representative is also K. So we re replace it with K here. And then we encounter E. E is in this batch. Itself is the representative of this batch. So we keep E here. And then we encounter R. R is in this batch, which re representative is K. So we formed this lexicographically smallest string, which is M-A-K-K-E-K. -K -K -E -K. So walking through the first example, we know exactly what we need to do, right? So we basically need to find, um, we go through the two equivalent strings, we hash out all of the strings, as long as they are equivalent based on the three rules, they are reflexitivity, symmetry, and transitivity. Based on these three rules, we hash them into different by hashing, I don't mean hash map. It, it just means we sort out all of the equivalency relationships between each character in these two strings. And then we can go through this base string one by one. We find the representative, which is the lexicographically smallest character. And then we can just return. Um, so I think um, the most challenging or the most interesting uh, the most meaty part of this problem is that how do we translate this transitivity rule into actual coding? Um, the problem, the first thing that came into my mind is uh, union find, and uh, the only uh, related topic here is union find. So we can introduce a template here to tackle union find. Basically, it's similar to almost like a recursive, or we can solve it in the iterative way. So what I usually do is I introduce a class, uh, union, I'll call it union find. Um, then in this case, uh, we since the problem is limited to consisting only of lowercase English letters, so 26, right? So the whole length of this IDs is going to be 26. So the reason we want to have an ID is basically, so say, uh, let's have some comment here for easy illustration. So uh, A, B, C, D, blah, 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 all the way to Z. So here, uh, if we have an array, we can easily map them to one, two, three. Last one is 25, right? So um, if we can use an array as their index to find the representative, which is le lexicographically smallest character to represent that batch, we can easily go through this base string to use the representative to form the lexicographically smallest word, smallest string, right? So that's the that's why we introduce this array of IDs, and then we have a constructor um, public union find. We will just uh, initialize this. For solve for the interest of this problem is pretty straightforward. We'll just initialize this IDs to be the length of 26 because it says only lowercase English letters. And then we're going to initialize this array to be pointing to the, the value of each position is just the index itself. So 26 um, IDs I equals i. 
So this is its constructor. Then we want to have two more methods. One is union, the other is find. Okay. So first we'll have um, a union method. Um, in this case, we want to find the representative. We basically want to connect two characters because they are equivalent. We can put them into the same like, group, right? Into the same union, basically, in this concept, in this context. Um, char A and char B. So here we want to introduce another method, which is basically to iteratively to find the smallest index that can represent this group. So we'll use x, introduce another one, a int y, b. And if x is smaller than y, so this is the index of, um, of this character a or b that we can find inside this id's array. If this is the case, ID's Y will use X as the representative for Y. Otherwise, we'll use ID's X as the, uh, we'll use Y as the representative of ID's X. Okay, now we need one more um, method, which is called find. Find, we're just taking X, which is the char itself. So as long as while while x minus so here is a one more a little bit tricky thing but also something uh, something to remember as well which is um i know how to handle this in java in other programming languages you can do similar things which is use the character minus this character a which is the base of all of the 26 characters then you get an integer if this one is not equals to this one itself, what we will do is that we will keep doing so until we find it. IDs, IDs, X minus A. In this case, we'll just keep finding the character that has a, that we have visited already, but has a lower has a smaller character that can represent this batch itself. And then we change this one to, then we change this one to be IDs um, X minus A plus A. So we want to convert this one into a character as well. So in the very end, what we will retain is just the index, which is x minus a that is the index that we would like to return so in this way we can keep finding the smallest um, character in the alphabetical order all right so this is the this this one basically is a template you can um, apply this template you can change modify adjust this template a little bit to fit whatever use case to solve problems that involve union find algorithm so with this in place, we can quickly implement this algorithm, which is we'll go through since S1 and S2, they are of equal length. C1, S1, char I, uh, two. Next one is, uh, so first we'll have a union find uh, class. We, we will have an instance of this data, this class that we just defined. You, uh, we can call it union f. You, oops, uh, I'll just call it uf. And then what we will do is we will union these two, c1 and c2, and then after we union all of them, we have completely mutated this IDs, right? When we call union, we basically hash these two into the same equivalence set, which is represented by this IDs array. Okay. Um, after we initialize, so first step, 
is we initialize this uh, a new instance of this class which causes this constructor which initialize this is this id array which has all of the index as its value and after we call union it's going to call find and construct all of the equivalency relationship and then afterwards what we will do is we'll just go through this uh, base string to char array what we can do we want to have a string builder to help us facilitate this string builder so basically what we can do now is pretty straightforward what we'll do is um, of course also we want to convert this because what we get back from calling this is an index so union uh, union i so here we'll just call oh because my instance is called uf find c that's it this will this will help us find the index the lowest index of this unions of this groups index and then we convert that one into the character which is by doing a sum of a and then convert that into char in this case we'll just return to string that's it now let's try to run this accept it let me see submit accept it um beats 76 percent um memory beats 60 percent um anyways um so this is the uh, a very uh, interesting problem and very um, cool problem and it basically um so what i would do what i would share with uh, you guys is to apply this um, template this is one of my favorite templates um, you can construct a, a class a customized class and you can have an array of ids in this case for solving lead code problems is usually 26 or 52 or a very small number um, and then you construct it initialize it with the value as with the index as its value and then we always based on the problem requirements in this case we try to find the smallest index as the group representative basically and then you you call you you iteratively call this id until you find that this id is really representing itself basically like a this index is representing itself in this case we exit uh, we know we find the smallest group representative. Um, all right, I hope this is a pretty long video, but I hope I've conveyed my points clearly enough and a very worthwhile, very meaty problem. If you can uh, deeply understand this problem, um, a lot of other union find legal problems that you can solve. Um, I strongly encourage you guys to really use your use a piece of use a piece of paper uh, like i i did use a piece of paper and a pencil to hash out everything why we need to uh, for the find method for example why do we need to have such a while method to find the lowest one is this like an elegant way could it be more efficient things like this to figure it out um yeah if you guys find this video helpful and please do me a favor uh, subscribe first and then hit the like button that really means a lot uh, to me and helps the helps with the youtube algorithm um, so um, and i'll see you guys in the next one thank you so much